I'm a divine child of the great mother, father, God. A divine child of the great mother, father, God. I'm a divine child of the great mother, father, God. A divine child of the great mother, father, God. Hello. Back with your moon sign readings. Just for a um, refresher so that you know, you know what's going on. Is basically, this is from the Great Mother Speaks Oracle deck. And this deck is specifically designed to help heal mama drama trauma. Mama drama trauma is a planetary disorder. It's a condition in which the mother projects unhealed aspects of herself onto her child, causing emotional and or physical trauma. In cases where she is so committed to her dysfunction or as a great mother likes to say is unwilling, unable or un available to heal her own MDT because it is a cycle, loving detachment is required. So loving detachment is accepting what is, you know, she's sick. She is unable to love you in the way that you need to be loved and support you in the way that you need to be supported. You establish those boundaries the way you need to based on your particular situation. But loving detachment is a practice. It's a practice of accepting what is, that the condition is what it is in your life and it is manifesting what it is and accepting that with a gratitude, accepting that with an appreciation for the fact that you are being able to learn more about yourself and to grow through your moon sign, which is basically your soul sign. You know, the sun sign is the physical personality, basically. It's what we do. The sun is what we do. It's great father energy, the law, the logos, the word. Great mother is the Holy Spirit. Great mother is the vortex, is the void. And so it's our emotion. It's what we don't see. Okay, it's our soul. It's our intuitive space. And so we talk about emotion in terms of the moon sign, your reactions, your thoughts, your feelings, but also in terms of your intuition, which is different. And that is your Vedic moon sign, which is traditionally a sign in progression to your moon sign. So if your moon sign is Taurus, well, then your um, Vedic moon sign is going to be Aries. It's 24 degrees, and so it is possible with signs being 30 degrees that your Vedic moon sign is Aries as well. So you want to check the links below because you might be Aries, Aries. So these readings are based on um, your Western moon sign, but are going to give you some intuitive insights from your general, what would be a sign before, your Vedic moon sign. So we're looking at the house of... Libra and the house of Libra is traditionally the seventh house in astrology and so of course in the Vedic that is going to be Virgo traditionally the sixth house so um, most of you Libra moon sign people are going to have a Vedic Virgo moon sign and so that means that you're going to be feeling intuitively a lot of sixth house energy and so we're going to talk about that in your reading for this new moon now your new moon readings are for you to really get a sense of who you want to be this moon cycle with your loving detachment what is it that you need to accept in your life as it is and appreciate as it is right here and right now because healing is the end of conflict. More specifically, it's the end of internal conflict. So we are experiencing a lot of external conflict in the world. We see it everywhere. And that is because we are all battling ourselves internally. That's how we know it's a planetary disorder. Everybody has some form of not feeling loved, not feeling nurtured and cared for. And so we're projecting this need onto others by what I call demand love okay it's, it's just demanding to be loved the way you want to be when you want to be how you want to be loving detachment is releasing that it's asserting yes i need love but let me detach from my structure from my limitations from my perceived notions of how that love needs to be manifested or shown to me western moon sign is emotional because it is your moon sign, but more specifically, we just focus on emotion and not intuition with the Western moon sign because the Western moon is earth centric. So it's based on you this lifetime. Okay. And how you're feeling in this moment. New moon wishes are based on how you're feeling in this moment. 
How are you feeling in this moment in relation to where you want to feel 28, 29 days from now? That's what your new moons are generally based on. And then more specifically, new moon wishes are made with the Western moon sign because they're based on how you feel. And so how are you feeling about Libra related issues? How are you feeling about your relationships with others? Okay, how is the relationship with yourself manifesting in those relationships personally and professionally? And what needs to be tweaked? Well, I want to have more productive relationships with people in my workplace. And in order for me to do that, I need to be, I want to feel, be more considerate toward those that I work with. It's a good example of a Libra new moon wish. And so this reading is going to give all signs um, a perspective on exactly how to do those new moon wishes, looking at your emotions. But then also because each card does have a chakra, it's going to specifically look at the chakra of your general Vedic moon sign in relationship to what Great Mother is sharing with you that is coming through intuitive through that Holy Spirit space and guiding you toward your direction over the next 28 days. So enjoy your reading. Thanks for watching. Hello Aquarius, Pisces, Moon Sign people. This is your Libra New Moon reading. Now this month, your Moon Sign is going to be in the waxing gibbous phase. And so that is a revisional period of your lunar year. It's a period when you're editing and you are, um, you know, rethinking how you're going forward uh, into your next emotional year, uh, which your new moon is typically, um, of course, during April. And so you're kind of uh, halfway through it there, a little more than halfway through it with that uh, waxing gibbous. And we say a little bit more because it's a regressional um, moon from your new moon it goes balsamic and so in May it went balsamic um, Pisces was balsamic it was waning crescent instead of waxing crescent that's the way the annual moon goes and so right now in this month of October your moon is waxing crescent you're revising and so emotionally looking at your moon sign of Pisces we're looking at the moon phases in this reading we are also looking at your intuitive space, your soul sign, your Vedic sign, which for most of you is going to be Aquarius. And so for that, we look at the chakras. Our goal here is to see how you're approaching this new moon. This new moon is in your eighth house. So that's rebirth. That's regeneration. It's also uh, being able to deal with dark matters in your life and bringing them into the light for clarification. It's receiving gifts as well uh, because there's a gift in doing that work, isn't it? It's a gift in doing mama drama trauma work. And a lot of times we don't want to approach that. And so this is the season of eighth house energy for you with this Virgo Libra new moon. We're looking at how you're approaching it. We want to see as a result of that approach, what new moon wishes would be most appropriate for your ego soul alignment and what to look out for over the next 28, 29 days in terms of how those wishes come to fruition and how to tweak them for the next new moon in Scorpio. You're approaching this new moon with Lilith energy, personal power. You are seeing your personal power. You are looking into the darkness and bringing it into the light as we see here in the scene of the Wizard of Oz when the good witch Glinda symbolizing great mother bestows the ruby red slippers upon Dorothy, her birthright, symbolizing her birthright to be happy, healthy, and whole, while the wicked witch, the drama mama, is in the shadows wanting to take them away. Dealing with mama drama trauma, there is retaliation when you do begin to assert your power, when you do begin to assert, establish, define, and maintain personal boundaries. This is where you are right now, but you have a very strong sense of this personal power and of the support that's available for you. You feel it from your gut. The gut chakra is ruled by Mars. And so Mars has just over the last month gone direct. And so you're feeling this very strong 
strongly as well as looking at the phase of this moon emotionally we're seeing a waxing gibbous moon this is the moon phase you are in this month and so it's coming through very powerfully that emotionally you are feeling this sense of assertion and that you indeed have a birthright to be happy healthy and whole your sidereal sign is Aquarius, which is ruled by the root chakra. Now, the um, Aquarius in sidereal is also ruled by Saturn. And so um, we want to look at how that is going to play into your reading as well, because you have a transformative opportunity which is third eye energy and so that's soul energy again that intuitive download coming in the energy of Maya looking beyond the illusion and how do we look beyond the illusion if not through our intuition this is very important because it is the new moon card this is the Libra new moon your eighth house energy and so how are you looking into the darkness of this dark night? What are you pulling from the shadows? What truths are coming from the shadows that are helping you to assert this newfound personal power or regenerated personal power? For some of you, you've been building it throughout the year, I know, as Pisces moon sign people. The third eye is ruled by the moon, great mother energy. And so you wanna look at how cancer is playing out in your birth chart as well. Don't overlook the fact that this gut knowing that you have a birthright to be happy, healthy, and whole is something that you're learning. It's not something that you have down right now. It's not something that you um, have like in rope memory right now. It's something that you're learning. And so as you learn it, do so consciously and with curiosity instead of judgment. The Moses card is learning to live the law and the law is literally connecting the gut chakra with the third eye. As we see, there's an antenna here and the antenna is there because there is a connection between our instinctual lower will and our higher knowing. And there's an antenna that goes from our instinct survival in the higher because the intuition guides our survival doesn't it when we are working towards our highest good and even when we're not you know we have the guidance of our angels guides and ancestors as Dorothy did with the three and Glenda along the yellow brick road but when we're doing so consciously <clears throat> which is what I'm getting from this with great mother because this scene is when Dorothy is recognized and really praised by the mayor of Munchkinland for destroying the Wicked Witch. And she's looking at them like, what? You praising me for killing somebody? I'm Dorothy from Kansas. That's not a good thing. She wasn't conscious. And you may not be conscious of the fact that asserting your personal power to take your birthright is a good thing. You know, that's exactly what you need to be doing. You know, we are happy. We are happy for you for doing that. And the illusion being transformed this month from this new moon for you, therefore, has to do with not realizing that and you needing to pull the curtain, like in this card, pulling the curtain on Oz, that it's anything other than that, that it's anything other than for your highest good, that you assert your personal power in living your divinity as a dearly loved child of the great mother, father, God, who's never judged, condemned, or left alone. In the center of your reading is the fact that you're processing this, another gut chakra card. And so in your gut, this knowing that you have about um, exactly what it is that you need to be doing in order to live that birthright to the best of your ability is coming to you. So if you're watching this before the new moon, the balsamic moon is the phase right before the new moon. It's a download period. And so you're 
you're downloading and you're processing um, all of this about your birthright and your divinity and how to align with that because emotionally there's some indication through the illusion card that the alignment is needed with that intuitive sense. If you already have this intuitive sense, you are very self-compassionate right now. There's some challenges coming up maybe. There's some flack, you know, that you're getting back and retaliation, but you are being compassionate with yourself enough so that you can stay the course. Now, this card is in the shadow position, so for some of you, that means that you are not being compassionate enough with yourself, and by the crescent moon, it's important two, three days after the new moon to plant the seed of self-compassion in your life, just very consciously again with learning to live that law when you're feeling criticized when you're feeling blamed and you're feeling shamed that you consciously say, okay, I need to be compassionate with myself. You know, from that heart chakra, just touching your heart, that crossroads between the ego and the soul to saying, okay, this is what I need. And isn't that exactly what Dorothy did when she met each one along the path? She didn't criticize them. Oh, you look crazy. You a scarecrow. What? Talking, coming off a pole. Well, you a tin man. Oh, rusty and stuff. I don't want to talk to you. A lion who's scared. Oh, please. No. She embraced them and said, come on. And so that symbolizes embracing aspects of ourselves that are fearful and that do not feel that we can take the journey and do what we need to do to come in a place of personal power. Embrace those aspects of yourself so that you can do that and um, get that universal justice that's coming to you, that cosmic justice that's there through all of these planetary alignments and the stars coming in alignment for things to occur. It happens for all of us. We're made of but stardust. All of these energies operate through and as us. And for you, with this first quarter moon energy this month, it's telling you it's time to make the decision consciously to take action in centering yourself. Centering yourself has to do with acknowledging that there is this intuitive knowledge that you have. And for you, it is a Saturnal energy. Now, Saturn is in Sagittarius in the sidereal right now. That is 10th house energy for you. And so maybe at work, Maybe your career, maybe what you see as your life purpose, your life's work is something that you need to assert your power in. And the challenge that you're having in doing that is your relationship with your mother. You may not have an active, quote unquote, bad relationship, but because of the undercurrent, again, we're looking at intuitive soul vibrations, the undercurrent of the toxicity of that relationship. Remember our birth mother, our birth family relationships are where we establish the roles that we play in all of our relationships. That role is not working for you in that career space. And Saturn, the cosmic school teacher, the grandfather clock that makes sure that we stay on schedule with our soul evolution is saying, look, this needs to be switched up. That's the contraction and the blockage and limitation that people speak of when they talk about Saturn. It's about let's get focused. You know, you only have so much time, this lifetime to do what you came here to do. And with Mama Drama Trauma, if you're watching this channel, you're one of my clients, you come to the, um, the phone calls that we have, the free Sunday, Monday night phone calls to support, then you are actively and consciously healing your Mama Drama Trauma. And what does that mean? It means that you are actively working on the evolutionary purpose of the disorder, which is to evolve in self-love and spiritual independence. Justice is cosmic. In this physical world, it appears one way, but in the soul space, it's another in your soul space, that 10th house, your career, you might be contemplating a new career even, but feel that you can't do it because of that toxicity that goes way back. Oh, you're not good enough. You can't do that. That needs to be addressed. It needs to be dealt with. And that is the justice. That's the Mayat, the Egyptian goddess of the scales that comes into play.
the spiritual justice. You have to seek and give that to yourself. Just as we see here in the scene of the Wizard of Oz, when Dorothy and the three confront Oz angrily about his inability to follow up on his promise to grant their wishes. So, after the journey with her ruby red slippers, she returns with the broom, with her power, and is told that I can't grant your wish. They're all told that. And so it's very similar to Mama Drama Trauma. In fact, Dorothy is the poster child for Mama Drama Trauma. Okay, that's why she's up there. Um, because we believe we should be promised a mother to nurture, care, love us the way that we need to be loved. But with this particular disorder, what we learn is that the truth is there's a spiritual justice that's at, at, that is at play. And that is what you're processing right now. Okay. In order to come into your personal power to provide that for yourself by learning to live the law, by aligning your ego and your soul to provide that for yourself as a divine child, you are well equipped to do that. So, Getting back to the centering, centering ourselves to do that is a conscious process. This is the scene when Dorothy clicks her heels three times. You're clicking your heels three times right now, Aquarius, Pisces, Moon sign people, body, mind, and soul, to go home, to go back to that place of divinity that has been shrouded with confusion, abandonment, and abuse, to realign with that. And the conscious effort to do that is illustrated in the scene when Linda the Good Witch, who symbolizes Great Mother, tells Dorothy to do that. And Scarecrow, the one without a brain, asking, why didn't you tell her that from the beginning? We have to find that out for ourselves. We have to draw the curtain on the illusion that we are not worthy. We have to do that. We have to go and get the broom. We have to take our power back. And so in your release position is Tara, who is the Chinese goddess of self-compassion, as well as centering yourself in the realization that um, you are beyond appearances, what may appear to be. You truly are that which you wish to be in terms of your life purpose, what I call life after MDT, okay? Living MDT free. There is more for you than mama drama trauma. What's going to facilitate you sustaining this understanding, this lunar cycle, and particularly for a new moon wish, is self-inquiry, Pisces moon sign people. Ask yourself on the regular, when you feel condemned, when you feel less than, when you don't feel worthy, when you don't feel that you have what it takes, when you feel that asserting your personal power um, is wrong or inappropriate or just makes you feel really, really scared to do it, just pull the curtain on that illusion by asking yourself, is it true? I always suggest the work of Byron Katie in the chapter of the book. That is the work of Byron Katie. Is it true? Do I absolutely know that it's true? How do I feel when I say that to myself or when I hear that? And turn it around, I am worthy. You know. That's why I constantly say, I am a divine child of the great mother, father, God, who's dearly loved never judged, condemned, or left alone. This is what's going to facilitate your work this lunar cycle. So your new moon wish, therefore, is balsamic energy, emotional energy of download, okay? And so this is the S of the aspire in living and loving detachment. So the S of, the, of aspire is father energy. It's earth father energy. It is walking these things out in the physical, literal world, even though they can be really kind of woo-woo to some of us. It's real. It's just as real as this scene in The Wizard of Oz when the scarecrow who now is Zeke again on the farm asked Dorothy, do you remember me? 
So it's not just woo-woo. Great mother energy inspires our physical action. It's the root of everything. And you being a root chakra soul sign, you understand this better than most. So for your new moon wish, suggested is something like, Great mother, I want to easily and effortlessly release all illusions surrounding my personal power so that I can center myself and align with the intentions of my soul. Great mother, I want to easily and effortlessly release illusions that keep me from embracing my personal power. Great mother, I want to easily and effortlessly have self-compassion that will allow me to exert my personal power. Those are the kinds of new moon wishes that I'm seeing for you. I'm seeing these new moon wishes for you as it relates to the dance that you're doing right now with your moon phase this month. First quarter moon. Taking action. You know, these very active new moon wishes that are saying I'm ready to download and I'm ready to follow this direction so that I can experience this cosmic justice. Now cosmic justice doesn't always turn out the way again in the physical world we expect it to be. This as the diploma wasn't exactly what the scarecrow may have been expecting. He may have been expecting a physical brain. Okay? But it all comes out in the wash. And what comes out in the wash for you to look for over the next 28, 29 days as you are going through this process by the full moon, which is your outcome card, I see self-mothering, that you see that by taking a more focused approach to what your needs are, having a, a greater sense of self-compassion and owning your personal power, that you do begin to see that you are indeed living the law and aligning yourself through conscious effort to do so. Thank you so much for watching, for sharing and liking. But above all and most of all, remember Great Mother loves you. And I do too. I'm a divine child of the Great Mother Father God. A divine child of the Great Mother Father God. I'm a divine child of the Great Mother Father God. A divine child of the Great Mother Father God. I am Great Mother, the still small voice of the Holy Spirit and Divine Mother. Cosmic Moon.